You had more media covering it than any case in American history. More media were in Santa Maria than, you know, the O.J. Simpson and Scott Peterson cases combined. And when I got in the case, I remember meeting with uh, Mr. Snedden, Mr. Zonin, Mr. Auchincloss, and I remember concluding to myself, these people think there's no way they're going to lose this case. And they think they're going to be major figures on the world stage, and they're feeling no pain. And I sensed a, a, a real feeling of hubris on their part, and I felt that this is something I can exploit, that I can take advantage of, because when prosecutors start feeling no pain, thinking they can't lose a case, and uh, start getting wrapped up with the media and self-importance, you know they're going to make a mistake. And that's how I view things. And these people just were on cloud nine. And I think they were shocked as the case went on and saw some a lot of their witnesses just get destroyed on the stand. And I think they were shocked that what the media told them was going to happen did not happen. And I don't think they'll ever get over the law. Um, I commend him for standing up for his alleged victim. You know, that's his job. He's convinced right. himself that, uh, that, that you know, Gavin Arvizo told the truth. Uh, I don't think Gavin Arvizo said very much that was correct. Uh, was he influenced by others to say this? Did he honestly believe what he was saying was correct? because he was influenced by others? I really don't know the answer to that. All I know is that what he said, in my opinion, was dead wrong about Michael Jackson. And I think we've proved it, because as I've said many times, I was advised by people close to me, don't take the case. It's going to destroy your life and destroy your career. That you can't win it, especially in a courthouse like that. You've got a very conservative jury pool. A lot of them come from the neighboring Air Force base. Uh, the conviction rate is extraordinarily high in that courthouse. And you can't win it. And the rest of your life, anywhere you go in the world, if people who see you are going to say he's the one that sent Michael Jackson to prison. And, oh my. you know, I took the case for many reasons. I really didn't know Michael Jackson at the time, but I said, I'm a criminal defense lawyer. This is what I do. This is what I believe in. And we make the system work, and we take courageous positions, and we have throughout American history. And I did what I thought was right, and um, I don't think these get over the loss because it was just so convincing a loss. I mean, he was indicted on 10 felony counts, but at the end of the trial, the judge on his own motion, and this wasn't requested by the prosecutors, it was on his own motion, the judge said, um, I'm going to allow the jury to the option of considering four misdemeanors on the last four felony counts, if they acquit on those counts, they can consider a misdemeanor option. And so he essentially added to a four, you know, decisions that the jury had to make in addition to the 10 indicted felonies. And so they had to make decisions on 14 charges, and they said not guilty on everything, even the four misdemeanors. So this was a humiliating loss for them, a devastating loss for the Santa Barbara District Attorney's Office and anyone who helped them. And I don't think these people will ever get over it. You know, where it's over 10 years later, I don't think they'll ever get over it. 